Good evening, our student. I am speaking, Dr. Nandan Kusumda, Associate Proprietor, Department of Autonomous Jalava, Dragged Bay Medical College. Today, <coughs> today topics is the retinoblastoma. This is the oh, intraocular oh, tumor. Thank you. Before sorry. discussion of retinoplastoma, we should oh, know what is sorry. tumor. That is what is neoplasm. And <coughs> this is the definition of neoplasm or tumor. I think everybody know this is collected from Robin's Robin's pathology. Robin's pathology. Neoplasm is an abnormal mass of tissue, the growth of which exceeds and is uncoordinated with that of normal tissue and persists in the same excessive manner after suggestion of the stimuli that evoke the changes. Now, if I go to what are the intraocular tumor? Actually, examiner when asked to you what are the intraocular tumor, you just say retinoblastoma and cordon melanoma. But sometimes this question maybe uh, comes on written, that is SEQ question. Then you choose this like a answer, that is what are the tumor of iris? Under tumor of iris, iris nevus, iris melanoma, and tumor of ciliary beauty, ciliary body of nevus, ciliary body of melanoma, and tumors of the choroid, cordal nevus, cordal melanoma, cordal hemangioma, and tumor of the retina, that is retinal tumor. Usually, intraocular tumor, that is, you should know, retinal blastoma. In brief, you should not brief. Now, epidemiology of the intraocular tumor usually important is retinoblastoma. It occurs in children before the age of three years. And another important intraocular tumor is, is the malignant melanoma of the carrot. There is no sex prediction in both situations. Among all intraocular tumor, retinoblast is the second most malignant intraocular tumor and cordial melanoma is being first. So among intraocular tumor, first position is the cordial melanoma and second position of intraocular tumor is retinoblastoma. Among all the tumor in the children, retinoblastoma position on eighth. Now, this is the retinoblastoma is the childhood tumor. So you should know what are the others childhood tumor. You should know what is that brain tumor, that is neuroblastoma and medulloblastoma, Wilms tumor, that is nephroblastoma, rhabdoma sarcoma, lymphoma, eum sarcoma, hepatoblastoma, and retinoblastoma. Some examiner choice, what are the childhood tumor, then you should know this is the childhood tumor. And what are the intraocular tumor? That is retinoblastoma. And now we are main topics is retinoblastoma. Simply we say RB. RB is the most intraocular malignancy tumor in the childhood and this is the eighth position among the all childhood tumor and the same position of the among all intraocular tumor. There is a no sex predilection. What is retinoblastoma? Most commonly, it is an intraocular tumor in childhood. Bilateral is 25 to 30 percent. That is, unilateral is common. That is, 75 to 75 percent. Averagely, we say. Clinically, this retinoblastoma appears before the age of three years. So there is a, if any patients, if any person uh, ultimately is 10 years, there may be escape 
of retinoblastoma. Retinoblastoma usually occurs in primitive retina or developing retina. If any person going to adult, there is no chance to develop retinoblastoma. So, so adult retina is exempted or immune from retinoblastoma. It may be genetic, it may be non-genetic and predisposing gene is the long arm of the chromosome number 13. This is the very important to you. Maximum examiner asks to student during exam, what number of chromosome effect is the in case of retinoblastoma? You know, 13 number is the unlucky. So, if any pers any uh, 13 number chromosome is affected, there is a mutation of 13 number of chromosome, there is a chance of retinoblastoma. So, unlucky 13, this is the unlucky chromosome number 13, long arm of the chromosome number 13. Presentation of retinoblastoma, there is a common presentation, is very very common presentation, leukocoria. Leukocoria, leuko means people, korea means white. So, white pupillary leaf flex and this is a simulate the cat's eye leaf flex. So, leukocoria means white pupillary leaf flex. And another presentation may comes with as strabismus or squint and secondary glaucoma and some inflammatory condition that is uveitis, pseudohypopia no. What is pseudohypopia? I think everybody know. If there is a collection of tumor cell in anterior chamber, we say pseudohypopia. And if there is a collection of pus in the anterior chamber, this is the hypopia. But what is pseudohypopia? Collection of tumor in anterior chamber, this is the pseudohypopia. There is a, some uh, abnormal structure may present in the anterior chamber. Usually in anterior chamber presence is aquasimar, but if there is a, some times there is abnormal structure present. In case of retinal person, there is a tumor cell. So if there is a presence in anterior chamber, we term, we give term pseudohypopia. And sometimes orbital inflammation occurs, proptosis occurs, and metastasis. Usually metastasis spread to uh, other systems of the body, you may proceed in, uh, in few. And this is the pictures help to understand leukocoria. In left eye, usually see there is a cat side reflex. If any patients usually comes with us with leukocoria or cat side, first our diagnosis is the retinoblastoma. But there is a, some difference in diagnosis leukocoma. In last slide, we try to uh, <coughs> give some information for the differential diagnosis of the leukocoria. So, so it is the retinoblastoma in left eye is retinoblastoma and there is a leukocoria. This is the first sign of retinoblastoma is leukocoria. Okay, then and staging, staging of retinoblastoma. Uh, there is a in very very important in case of OSP, in case of SAQ just know about what is staging of retinal blastoma, quiescent or latent stage, glucometer stage, stage of extraocular extension, and stage of distance metastasis. Now, quiescent. Quiescent, usually it may be start since birth and it up to continue up to six months to one year. And this is a common presentation in case of retinal blastoma. And glucometastase. Glucometas, glaucoma means painful. See, there is a picture here, uh, left picture, there is a pseudohypopion, uh, there is a right picture, severe pain, little bit of proptosis, inflamed. So, what is glucometastase? Patients complain severe pain, redness, watering, vision is lost, IUP is more raised, about 60-70 intraocular pressure and inflammations and there is a some uh, resemble it looks like orbital cellulitis or preceptor cellulitis. This is a very painful situation and this is the extraocular extension. You know globe when extraocular extension globe is maybe burst and it looks like a fungetic nature, fungetic size and it means there is extraocular tissue is involved and patients 
uh, patients looks like proptosis pattern of tumor of spread usually uh, spread of retinoblastoma via optic nerve choroid lymphatics and via blood if via blood there may be chance to spread to lungs brain and bone is via proptic nerve there may be chance to spread in the brain and these patients may develop meningitis even chance to die retinoblastoma is the malignant condition it is a very dangerous situation if you uh, early not diagnosis patient may chance to spread to brain lung so patient may to die so very important the retinoblastoma how to diagnose retinoblastoma there is so many method to help us how to diagnose the retinoblastoma initially when this type of patients comes to us with leukocoria and proptosis then we first to try fundus examination you know fundoscope there is an instrument or ophthalmos is a good instrument it helps to us to examine the fundus but patients is very Uh, patient is maybe three years, so it is a very, very, very tough to find a screen regeneration. So, in that situation, uh, sometimes we have to anesthesis. So this anesthesia, this anesthesia is examination under anesthesia, deep by deep anesthesia with the help of deep, deep anesthesia, we try to find a examination and give patients with retinoblastoma. So we clearly understand patients in retinoblastoma. So fundus examination very important for early diagnosis of retinoblastoma. And then ultrasonogram. In our expert in ophthalmology, we say this is a B scan. It's just like an ultrasonogram. The ultrasonogram probe, I probe if I probe on the eyeball, and they easily understand this is the uh, retinoblastoma. And any another important and easy. Examination is plain X-ray orbit. Plain of X-ray, plain. If I give some plain X-ray orbit, there is some guideline it helps to. There is some calcification and it helps to understand maybe there is a retinoblastoma. And CT scan. It is a very important test retinoblastoma and MRI. Lastly, MRI. So among five common investigation, the very important to us. Fundus examination, then CT scan, then ultrasonogram. And when we will do CT scan, what are the findings we will find? There is a calcification. And you MRI, MRI usually when optic nerve is involved or extraocular extension, then easily understand this is the uh, what extension. If there is a metastasis spread, MRI helps to us. And this pictures very important to you sometimes. Um, in OSP examiner choice, there is a, a picture give to in OSP examination. In left eye, there is a retinoblastoma. You just you clearly see there is a calcification in left eye. In retinoblastoma, in calcification is helps to us there is a diagnosis of retinoblastoma. Sometimes examiner asks to what is the what is the in OSP what is the film this is the CT scan and what are the findings there is a calcification in the left eye so clearly this is the left eye not right eye so left eye there is a calcification and this is the CT scan so then then another question matter so our target to management you know this is a malignant condition this is the cancer. So, if any patient come to us with retinoblastoma, our first target save her or his life. First target. Then, if then if possible, save the eye. Then possible, we save the vision. So, so first target to save the life. This is the aim of management. Treatment usually will go. Cryo by cryotherapy, photocoagulation, brachytherapy. Okay, so if small tumor will choose cryotherapy, photocoagulation and brachytherapy. If there is a 
local treatment is external beam radiation and enucleation. This is the last treatment is enucleation and systemic treatment is chemotherapy. This is the very important treatment guideline of retinoblastoma. It depends on size and location of tumor. Size, if there is a small tumor, we measure if size is 4 millimeter diameter and 2 millimeter thickness, we decide this is the small tumor. On that situation, we will choose what treatment we will give. We will treat the, treat the retinal blastoma by laser pho photocoagulation of cryotherapy. Laser photocoagulation of cryotherapy. So if examiner asks to you, if it is a small tumor of retinal blastoma, this is the early stage of retinal blastoma, what treatment we will choose? Treatment is laser photocoagulation and cryotherapy. If tumor is size is more that is medium size of tumor up to 12 12 millimeter in diameter and 8 millimeter thickness our treatment plan is chemotherapy and radiotherapy chemotherapy and radiotherapy and large tumor that is 12 millimeter is size and here we <coughs> choose treatment again chemotherapy radiotherapy and if need we will do surgery enucleation you know enucleation is the mutilating surgery just you remove the eyeball stam the optic nerve and remove the eyeball this is the last treatment of uh, retinoblastoma why will you do save the life save the life and followed by we give chemotherapy or radiotherapy when we do when there is a optic nerve involved there is a last treatment is retinoblastoma is enucleation followed by chemotherapy radiotherapy. And sometimes some examiners choose to students what are the chemotherapy is then used in case of retinoblastoma. Usually these three important drugs will be used vincristine, etoposide and carboplatin. And there is an important term some examiner chose to ask question chose to ask question to students what is chemo chem, chemo reduction chemo means chemotherapy reduction means to reduce the size if there is a large size of tumor or medium size of tumor first we give chemotherapy there is a size which reduce then we give focal therapy focal therapy means previous slide i show cryotherapy and photocoagulation so what is chemo reduction chemotherapy if there is a large size or medium size we give chemotherapy and reduce the size then we do will give focal therapy that is cryo or cryo or laser photocoagulation and there is another term brachytherapy brachytherapy when radiation is applied from short distance and what is teletherapy when radiation is applied from distance just term you should know some examiner sometime choice this is the term what is chemo reduction then you say what is brachytherapy when radiation is applied from short distance teletherapy when radiation is applied from distance and <coughs> Last treatment is enucleation and there is some examiner is choice what are the indication of enucleation of retinoblastoma and when will you do retino when will you enucleation in case of retinoblastoma this is important SEQ and OSP. If retina is affected if retinoblastoma affects more than half of the retina there is a decision make enucleation. If tumor involve the optic nerve, choroid and orbit, your decision is enucleation. And there is a painful glaucoma and loss of vision. These three indications is the enucleation of retinal blastoma when half of the retina is involved, when optic nerve, choroid and orbit is involved, and painful glaucoma with loss of vision will do. We are, our plan is enucleation. And 
or the differential diagnosis of leukocoria. Previously, we say leukocoria means white pupillary reflex or cat's eye reflex. This is a very very important question. What are the differential diagnosis of leukocoria? Sometimes patients of like three years come to us with leukocoria. Our we should know what are the other causes of leukocoria. What are that congenital cataract, persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous, and retinopathy of prematurity. These three usually presents at birth. When at birth we will find there is a leukocoria, then we decide maybe congenital cataract, maybe persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous, maybe retinopathy of maturity. But when patient is within one to three years, our thinking is retinoblastoma but should confirm by fundoscopy examination b scan and even ct scan on on depends of leukocoria we will never say this is a retinoblastoma so within one to three years a patient patient come to us with presentation of leukocoria we suspect maybe there is a retinoblastoma and another differential diagnosis coarse disease and toxocariasis usually course is a toxocaris is occurs preschool age that is uh, four to uh, seven years is uh, it usually found uh, with leukocoria we suspect there may be course disease or toxocariasis and endophthalmitis it may be found in at birth may be found in three years may be found in six years so endophthalm this is the infective condition inflammations uh, it may be found in any age This is the atypical, atypical presentation. Usually, a common presentation of retinoblastoma is leukocoria, squin, and uh, proptosis, and some inflammatory condition. This is the atypical presentations of retinoblastoma. It is actually for extraordinary students. Sometimes, examiner choice what is the best students in our class. Then, for just the best student of class, then examiner sometimes asks to you what is the ethical presentation of retinoblastoma this is the importance of with pseudo hypopion maybe with spontaneous hypemia you know hypemia means collection of blood in the anterior chamber and vitreous hemorrhage there may be blood found in the vitreous and thysis bulbi thysis means small shrinkage sightless soft eyeball this is the thesis bulbing thank you today up to this and next saturday we'll try to come with you another topics and i hope you'll be stay at home and be care yourself thank you thank you